right, so here we are in a little different setting from the last few videos. We're looking here at the back plate. It is a pretty dented up piece that actually has some punctures from the previous sledding history. It's going to be all right. We can deal with that. The main thing we got to do is hammer out the dents, which we'd actually would have had to hammer it out anyway a little bit because this piece is pretty well dished from its history as a sled. And being the back instead of the front, this actually has to be a lot more flat. So we're going to be hammering mostly in the middle to get it flattened out. The curvature around the rib cage, I like. We're going to keep that. We're just going to fold that forward. The curvature around the shoulders, I like. We're going to keep that. But this, uh, this needs cleaned up and it needs flattened out. And then we can uh, accentuate maybe some curves on the side. And then we're going to have to roll the edges. This is going to be the first rolling we've done. And on top of that, there are trapezoidal shapes that need to be hammered into these. We're going to start with the back plate because on the chest plate and the shoulder uh, pauldrons, those are much more visible than what's going on back here. So you might say that we're going to practice on the back and perfect our technique before we do anything on the front. So I'm going to do... <laughs> got my happy helper here this time to help me hammer. Do you have the hammers? Yep, you got the main hammer. That's what we needed. All right, so we've done some hammering around this side, and it's it's definitely better. I could use some work still. It's not the smoothest in the world. The middle is still largely untouched. I did do some basic hand bending just to uh, start getting in the whole back shape, and this side I think is looking real good so far. This side is a little rough, predictably. It's a little Daddy, angular look. because it's not as round from where we've been hammering pieces flat. So um, now I'm actually going to flip it around, bust out just the anvil on the ground, hammer it from the inside to try to get out the rest of those dents, make them flatter. Crease. We're not ready yet. So the best way to do that is keep hitting the same spot on the anvil, unless you've got a big anvil, then you've got a lot more wiggle room. I don't have a lot of room, so I gotta move the piece and keep hammering in the center. When the bang gets loudest, that's when you actually know that you're bending metal, because when it's flat against the metal and you hit the hammer flat, you're just flat as staying on flat. That's not really accomplishing anything. It's actually you can tell from the sound if you're moving metal or not. If it's bouncing around in your hands, you're probably manipulating the metal. I 
think you can see that. It's really, it still ain't pretty. may not get pretty, but it's a heck of a lot better than where we started. Daddy. That is for sure. That could be a lot worse. I'm gonna... All right, so overall, I think this isn't bad, especially considering how it started. Um, there is some damage that's just not gonna come out. Uh, this here, it went all the way through. This again is from use as a sled. I knew that those marks were in there when I bought it. Um, after a paint job, after the back brackets are added, it's gonna be three brackets. After the ridges are hammered into it, and after the camo paint is on it, I know. Excuse 101. But I think this is going to look uh, pretty good. So now the thing we got to do is flare the tail end up so it comes out. So, you know, it doesn't stab you in your lower back. And then we're going to roll the bottom edges. Once we roll the bottom edges, if we feel like we're strong with that, we're going to roll the arms and then the top. So for now, we've got to... Uh, flare these up. We're going to be using the forming stake to upside down in order to get those tapered up. I've gone and I've switched to the ball hitch. Uh, trying to get a good view of that. It is a much smaller, easier to work with since we're dealing with curves here. I decided the forming stake was just too wide. You could probably still do it with the forming stake, but I'm going to switch to a smaller hammer, one that's got a slightly more rounded side than the big one. Because the big one is going to want to squish my, my V flat here, my curves. This guy is hopefully going to be able to work his way right in the middle. So again, I have a lot of, a lot of different size hammers. You just never know. see that I did do one pass before I turned the camera back on there you can see the subtle tapering starting to happen I'm gonna try to smooth it out so today we are back at working on our back plate um, the main thing that we're gonna be working on is trying to increase this taper we got a little bit of it done last night you can see it's not terrible the red line here is where we're gonna be rolling it so we need to get a little bit more of a taper above the roll so I've gone back to the smaller ball hitch to try to get the uh, curvature into the tighter corners without flattening things out too much. And I'm going to be using my slightly more rounded, lighter hammer for some quicker hits. And we're going to try to get our curvature going right now. extreme arch fortunately it's pretty sloppy so uh, now I'm going to switch back to the rubber mallet and the wider dome piece to try to clean it up so busting out the smaller smaller rubber mallet to, uh, to clean this up
I think that's a much more natural, a little more subtle, a little more cleaned up taper. And the main thing is you can't let these get too wide. You don't want to let them get real close either. Especially if you're a fella built like me with a little more room in the love handles. Worst thing you could have is this stuff jabbing into your hips all day. Yeah, like I say, remember always you're building the armor for yourself. So, you know. See how the fit? I don't know how easy that is to see, but honestly, that feels like it's my shape. So, I am. Uh, Pretty pleased with that. Could probably widen this out a bit down on the sides. But I'm gonna lose a few pounds for con season. So I tell myself so. Um, I don't know, I like our shape. Pretty pleased with this. Now we're gonna start rolling. Alright. So when we're rolling these edges that we're gonna be working on, a lot of the videos you'll find online show that the process of rolling is to flip your piece upside down, hammer a 45 degree angle down on the side of the vise, and then put it on like a chisel or a stake and basically roll it back. The whole point is to roll it back away from your skin. This leaves a nice soft inside against where it's going to touch your body. So you hammer it flat, you hammer it down, you roll it backwards. That is, a lot of times, the easiest way to roll armor. Unfortunately for us, uh, Mr. Terry English, in his ever-knowing wisdom of ways to make armor look cooler, what he actually does is he rolls it back at a 45 degree angle up. Well, I don't know that he does that step first, but I do know that he then rolls the armor in against the skin. So instead of having your crease on the inside exposed, you don't ha you have a nice seamed edge that is it, it's just a better looking edge. It looks better than this. Even the most skilled guys rolling this back, a lot of times you see the crease of where the armor's rolled back. By having it come up and then roll in you have a consistent line. There's no gaps, there's no spacing. If there's something uneven, you don't have that. Anything that's imperfect is covered up on the inside underneath the armor. So that makes it tougher for us. Uh, this is an area where even I thought real, real hard about shelling out the 150 bucks for what they call a bead roller. This is something that is two pieces on a wheel that you could run the armor through and it will push up that portion for you. You can get those on Amazon for 150 bucks for hand crank. Um, little eight inch ones that you just mount on a vise. You can get 18 inch ones that you mount on a vise. Obviously there are floor mounted ones that are much better uh, quality that cost several hundred dollars. And there are even mechanical ones that are not hand crank, big floor mounted ones that are several thousand. So, but for 140 bucks, you could get an eight inch hand crank vise mounted seam roller and do this easy. This also could have done most of the seams that we put on the armor. Everything that we're hammering in could have gone through a seam roller. Everything we're about to hammer in can go through a seam roller. So I thought real, real hard about shelling out the money just to buy one of those, but uh, I'm going to keep continuing my old hammer and anvil ways. We're going to keep it simple and we're going to try to keep the budget down and I'm going to show you guys my best effort to replicate this kind of armor rolling using only your hammer, your vise, and uh, that we're going to be using a, a chisel. You guys are going to see a lot of that coming up. This is just to highlight the point I was just discussing with the paper that hopefully can give you a better idea how the material here is flared back and then it curls over. This is a picture of the inside and see how it's flared out and it curls back over to the inside. So this is a little bit opposite to some of the tutorial videos you might find online on how to roll armor. Honestly, this way looks better when you can get it done cleanly, which I am positive is why they did it in the movie. But um, it's a little tougher for us. That's cool, we're gonna tackle this, we got it. All right, so this is the practice one, just to make sure I wasn't being crazy. Obviously, it's not quite as pretty because you do see the, the marks of the hammering around the edge, so it's not like it's a perfect 
replacement of that seam roller I was talking about. But overall, I'm actually pretty pleased with this. Um, so what we're going to do is the bottom, like I had talked about, I'm going to try to show a little of that on the video. And then, of course, the arm holes, which are going to have to be pretty because people are going to see those. The neck is going to get covered up by the neck bindings, little leather or leather-like material. The bottom is going to be covered up by your tail pad. Very little of that is even going to be visible. So that's why I recommend you do these two first so you can get your technique down. And once you're confident you can make something that looks good, then you start the armholes. And I think I mentioned this previously, and we're also starting on the back for that very same reason. We want to have this completely perfected before we go into the breastplate because that is going to be insanely visible. Everyone's going to be presented with that up front and center. So, all right, I'm going to hit the old fast forward and hopefully just hammer plow right through this tail pad and uh, we'll see how it goes. First thing we're going to do is we got to flip it upside down and hammer it out. Got to get it out before we can curl it back inside. So you got to draw your line down the inside as well. You probably already got it on the outside. But you're going to have to switch it. And we're just going to, it doesn't have to be in the same crease. We just got to you know, get it out. I'm not going for a 45 degree angle. Not on, not on this anyway. So we're just going to work our way around. And try to keep the pressure on it to keep it from flattening out once you hit the turn. Because once you start hammering this out, it is going to want to straighten out. So you got to keep the pressure on it. In fact, what I'm going to even do, because we're going to have to curl this top right back around anyway, don't even try to get the whole thing flat. You just want to get the crease in the middle. Don't even hammer it up at the top. Keep it down there at the bottom. As you work, you can see your crease start to form. You can see where your hammer's been. You can't tell it from there, but once you start doing it, you're definitely going to see it. But, uh, see the impact mark because it's going to be a different color because the way the shine is it's going to be much smoother on the crease of the edge you're just going to keep working on that and go all the way around This is what I would call good enough. And if you see that edge right there, it may be know, maybe tough to see your edges a lot of times because you know we did work to arch this stuff back to begin with. So trying to get a solid crease on this now is actually pretty tough. But um, the way I look at it, this is good enough for the next phase, especially for this portion. The arms are going to be a much cleaner deal. You're not going to have nearly as much distortion to have to work around. And as I said, because I'm a cheater, this is going to get covered up by your tailplate anyway. So this is almost just practice. So don't stress too badly about this lower section. So now that we've hammered it out, now we got to curl it in. So I've made about a centimeter, a little less than half an inch <coughs> space here. We're going to put our chisel, use it like a stake straight up the cold chisel that cannot stress enough you have got got to round these off and even knock the corners off them especially for this part because you're going to be in a rounded area so if you even wanted to get a couple of these you can get these from harbor freight for like four bucks each you can round off some pretty extreme but this one's fine for now it's um i used it on the neck which as i mentioned before did not turn out all that badly in fact, it's fairly smooth and fairly presentable and definitely would be comfortable. So, yeah, maybe I got to take that edge down a little bit to get it completely comfortable. 
but uh, so that's what we're going to be doing here. So we're going to be putting the stake about halfway into that, and we're going to start hammering that down. We want to keep the flare out and then curl it back under. So now I think we've got a pretty good foundation to do our flare. First we want to make sure, just look along level. Is it level enough for your liking? Because you know your shapes can get a little wobbly sometimes and you can't just grind flat a rolled edge like you can with one of the regular ones. But uh, you know, the areas that you see that might be out of position, obviously this is a little loose so it looks deeper and there's a little wobble there for the most part we got a pretty good line we can clean that up as we go along at this stage our curl is back pretty far and that's not terrible so what I'm gonna do is just beat on this with a hammer for a little while without it against something you don't want to crease it you don't want it to fold sharply you want it to kind of roll and from what I've learned um, you're gonna want to uh, not have it against something solid to instantly flatten it so just holding it even though it's going to shake and even though you're going to feel like you're just hammering nothing as you look you're going to see that that more gentle forgiving those impacts are going to do more of a rolled effect and less of a flattening effect uh, at least that's my hope that's what i felt like happened on the neck so i'm optimistic it's going to happen here then of course as you start to see places that are uneven you can just hammer those a little bit more try to get them to roll a little tighter hopefully rolling everything tight if you made a good line and you've hammered an initial good line it'll all fall into place and need very little correcting but correction is necessary sometimes and say so we can get it so i'm just going to beat on this a little while freehand loose try to get it to roll up on itself before we put it back on the anvil on an angle and really seal it in. put it back on the anvil just real quick um, I didn't make it clear but I think it was fairly obvious the reason I switched to this handle uh, this hammer is because it's got a more of a rounded shape which is just much better for these corners if you have the square hammer you risk jabbing the edges and not making any contact in the middle so I switched to a rounded hammer on the inside edge whenever I'm working on that area and also it's a lighter hammer I feel like I'm doing Maybe it's in my head, but I feel like I'm doing more rolling, again, less flattening when I use this thing. So whether that's true, I guess we'll find out when we're done. Um, and you also, the other thing that you should point out, I should point out, is when I'm hammering, regardless of which hammer, a lot of times I'm not looking to impact in, I'm sort of swiping down. Because I want the momentum to carry the edge almost like a wrap around. 
not impact flat. I want it to curl, so I want the impact to start and carry through the bottom edge so you get sort of a, uh, when you do that swiping motion, it's hopefully going to be doing more rolling and again less flattening. It's all about the roll, not the flatten. So you see enough where we're starting to get pretty pronounced lip action on our edge and it's also a little flatter than it was a minute ago and hopefully we can even get it still more uniform and flat all the way around so this is going to be the biggest roll that we do so in some ways you might say this is the hardest which is good that it's the least visible because the rest of them are going to be shorter they're not going to be as wide as your entire waist and then on the front the armholes aren't even as pronounced as that they're much shorter on the front so all these rolls that we're doing now are going to be, if you want to look at it in an optimistic way, this is going to be, you know, light at the end of the tunnel because these are going to be the longest rolls that we do. So now I'm going to throw it back on the anvil. And I'm going to try my best to hold the anvil in line with the ridge because now we are going to close this gap. And we do need something behind it, underneath it. So you're going to let it sit at an angle, put it on there, and just tap a tap a tap all the way across. Again, don't be in a huge rush to close it, because if you close it right away, it's going to flatten it right away, which in this case is still going to be okay. It's not that big a deal, but we're trying to practice to perfect the form so that when we do our arms, they're going to be nice and pretty. So if you do flatten it, it's pretty difficult to work back out. You're welcome to try, but in my opinion, especially on the lower back, if you flatten it, just roll with it. Just try to get the rest of it looking good. Um, so let's do that now. Some of you may now be wishing, oh, why didn't I just buy the seam roller? Well, if you're already at this point and you're working along with me, uh, you should have bought the seam roller before you even started. That may not make anybody feel better, but there was a lot of things that could have done. So at this point, you're pot committed. Let's just have fun with it. Now I realize quickly I want this the other way. So we... Just going to. I've been talking to myself. No, I haven't. see an area get kind of thin it's probably because it is not as curved and you can cut it a little bit more to get a little more material there this area a lot of material popped through I don't think that's a bad thing we could have just taken the curve a little less aggressively but it's not going to hurt anything got to take your time and don't be in a rush see this part here I'm already about to finish it well this part still got a quarter inch got a little carried away a little bit maybe and all we 
always check your shapes. Even now, it's not too late to try to make a correction to bend them back where you want them. But the same way we sealed the edges by hammering most sides flat, rolling an edge is going to give it a lot of strength, for better or worse. If you've got a bad shape that you roll, it's going to be very tough to keep it from staying a bad shape forever. So try to make sure your shapes are good before you start to roll them. But if you see there, we're, get, we're getting there. That's starting to look like an edge. An edge that will not slice you up as it rubs back and forth on the back. starting to close some of our edges. This looks worse than it is because you got the uh, hammer marks and the sharpie in there. This actually won't be nearly as bad once we clean it up. Overall, we got a pretty, pretty decently straight lip here. I'm not at all unhappy with this. Yeah, I'll take this every time. Well, I hope to improve on it, of course. We want to make these even prettier. But this ain't too bad, and this is much, much more rigid than it was originally. So we've locked in some pretty good shapes here.
So we are well on our way to getting our ridges. We are almost to the point where I'm going to start hammering them down instead of in. I'm going to hammer them in just a bit longer. Overall, I am pretty pleased with these. These are smooth. They're uniform. They are looking good. Now, I don't have the ultra nice crease that you would get from using that bead roller. Um, doesn't have the perfect crease that you get from the screen new sets but you do have the correct shape and you do have smooth lines and this is uh, this is looking good I'm very pleased with this I'm actually rolling is one of my least favorite things to do in general but right now I'm feeling confident enough I wish I had the breastplate ready to go I want to keep going we also got to do rolling on the inside edges of the shoulder pauldrons uh, we might get to that today got to see how well this goes but um no, I'm feeling good about the technique we're using. I'm feeling good about the results we're getting. Um, I'm liking this. We don't need no stinking $150 tools. Um, which kind of flies in the face of the advice I gave you about buying the round sleds. I said, think about what your time is worth. But, you know, this is kind of relaxing. It's very soothing. Kind of meditation style sometimes when you get to working with this and seeing the shapes take place. So I'm going to work on this a little bit. Final video on the back plate for now. I am loving our roll. They are smooth, they are uniform, they are nice and tight all the way through. Whenever you think you're done as well, give it a rub across the entire thing because if you feel an edge, that edge is going to be digging into your clothing or bare skin if you roll that way. But this nice little tight roll we got here is looking good. I'm real confident in it for strength. And once we clean it up, I'm telling you guys, I don't know if you realize just how dirty the aluminum is while you're working with it. When we uh, acetone and then scrub it down prior to painting, you guys are going to see um, all the details just sort of pop. And I think this is uh, came out real nice. So. There are indentations, as I've drawn on here already. These are things that we are going to do later. The indentations are mostly for looks, I'm assuming, but adding any ridges and shapes are going to create strength. But right now, I'm going to call this the structural phase of the back plate. And we're going to continue on with the rest of the structural phases of the parts that we're building. We're going to be jumping into the breastplate and the shoulder pauldrons next. So we're going to hammer those out and get our rolls into them and get everything looking real good. And then we're going to go in and do all of the geometric shapes and things like that into each of the individual pieces all at the same time. Uh, we're going to perfect that technique and just knock it all out at once. For now, we're going to keep the uh, techniques that we've already done into our rolls and put them into our new shapes. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow.